around there. And one thing they had in common, like I said, they needed help. And they were all there seeking for solution. They had various kinds of needs. Looking for answers to the issues in their lives. And they had come to this place. Actually, they, they think um, it, it, it seemed like there's a superstition. You know, something that people have come to generally believe that it exists, although it might not be real or the truth. That is what people refer to as superstitious. But it's even interesting to know that some people will even tell you that our belief as Christians are superstitious beliefs. <laughs> Simply because, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't satisfy the criteria of the human senses. So most likely what the modern man, somebody in our own generation, or in our world today we regard as superstitious, is anything that to him does not make sense. To the man out there, your Christianity doesn't make sense. Because how can you believe in a man that you say lived about 2,000 years ago and he was killed and then if you believe in him, your sins will be forgiven and your life will change. And every other, you know, story around Christianity. To them, it's superstitious. But to us, it's not superstitious. So, but the thing around here is that they had believed that an angel visits this pool and each time the water is stirred. The angel visits the water is stirred. Then whoever gets into the water first, then, you know, gets healed. His problem is solved. He gets an answer. This was the belief, which is a demonstration of faith. <laughs> it's a demonstration of faith. You just believe that an angel visits. We, we are not told how many times the angel visits in a day, or whether it's even a weekly visit. I, I, I tell you, it, it might be such. It could even be monthly or even an annual visit. Hmm. And you are just patiently waiting for this visit. You don't even know when. There's no appointment. It's going to be today. So everybody comes. Because we are told that this man has been in this particular place. He has been in this situation, in this condition. One, in this condition. Secondly, in this particular place. For 38 years. Waiting for something he was not sure or certain about. That's a demonstration of faith. That's a demonstration of faith. And his condition, he's discovered as an invalid. An invalid. He was not in a position to help himself. And it even goes beyond just being in a position to help himself. Because there are times you are not in a position to help yourself, but somebody else can help you. But in his own case, when Jesus comforted him, he said, I have no man. Not only that I can't help myself, but I don't even have anybody. No brother, no sister, no mother, no father, no uncle, no auntie, no friend. He was bereft of any kind of, you know, supportive, you know, relationship or assistance. What kind of life is that? I don't know who is hearing me tonight. And you are maybe in a similar position. Paralyzed for life. I was trying to look at even just what it means to be this, you know, paralyzed. Paralyzed. Having looked after my own father who suffered a stroke, you know, 
I was not there all the time with him because I was somewhere studying. But my younger brother was there before he had to stop schooling because my mother was already late. My other sister was already married. So, and I was in school. So, the one following me immediately had to stop going to school so he can stay back. Was the one who would take our father to the hospital for checkup. Was the one doing everything, taking care of him, all the, the care, personal care, and every other thing. I know that it's not an easy life. Physical paralysis. But there's something that goes beyond physical paralysis. It's a spiritual paralysis. When people's lives have been so spiritually disabled, paralyzed. Now part of the, the thing about paralysis is that you are not able even to help yourself. You can't even lift your hand. Raise your hand. You can't move your feet. It feels so heavy. You, you will be just like, just, just move it. Like we were saying to my dad, just, just move it. it. It's not. The muscles are not working. The ligaments, the tendon, nothing is working. Nothing is working. So a paralyzed life is a life. Whether spiritually or physically or emotionally. Because people can also be emotionally paralyzed. Things are disabled in their life. No feeling. Because even in those legs, no feeling. Spiritually, they are not feeling God. They are not in touch with spiritual realities. They are not sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit. And if you are in that position tonight, there is hope for you. No matter how much your life has been paralyzed, I say to somebody, there is hope for you. Don't give up. No matter how long you have been in that situation or in that position. Paralyzed life is a life that is grounded. Grounded. It's a word you can use for aircraft. When an aircraft has been grounded, it can't fly. That life cannot fly. That is, I'm laying these foundations. You, you will understand when Jesus said to him, get up. Rise up. <laughs> Like we were saying to my father, I've already said it. Just feel it. It's a life that is grounded. It cannot fly. It's a life that is stranded. You met some people who are stranded in life. You're going somewhere. Only to get to the place and discover that the last bus is gone. Or the last train has just left. They are stranded. You can be stranded to the point where there is no accommodation for you or there's no transport for you or that you don't have the money even when these things are available to move. <laughs> the friend was just telling me at work. He lives in Stoke. He came to crew the other day. I don't know how it happened to him. But he just discovered that at the time he finished, he didn't have any money on him anymore. And <laughs> he, he didn't have Either his card or there was nothing in the card anymore. E everything gone. So he went to the driver and just said, please, this is a condition. He said, what has that got to do with me? <laughs> Take care of yourself. And just before him, the boss took off. He thought of what to do. But eventually he had to call his uncle, who then sent some money to his account. And so he was able to to move. That's a life that is stranded. When people are stranded in life, nothing works. They are in the same situation for years, for decades. The way you saw them 10 years ago is still the same way you are seeing them today. No new thing is happening. You go to their house, no new thing has come in. Everything you find there are old things. You come to their spiritual life, is the same testimony they shared 
20 years ago that they are sharing today. It looks like God died 20 years ago and he's not doing any new thing. And I declare to anyone in that situation tonight, new things shall begin to happen in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When people are stranded, they live an outdated life. A life of yesterday. All that there is are ashes when life used to be in the good old days. They keep talking about. As if God is dead. They are stuck. Stuck. Cannot move. They are held down. They are tied down. And they are abandoned. I will come back to the abandonment as we carry on. But this was the position of this man. And he has been in this position for 38 years. 38 years is not, it's not uh, 38 days or months. Think about that. But he had faith. And he still remained there every day. I want to say to somebody, don't give up. No matter what you're going through. No matter what is happening in your life. Don't give up. For weeping may endure for the night. But joy will certainly come in the morning. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. It says... That the things which are seen are temporary. They are temporary. The things that are seen, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. The things that are seen, the things that are visible, anything you are going through is changeable. It's changeable. Your condition is changeable. Your situation is changeable, no matter what that situation is. Be it a health challenge, be it a financial mountain, be it a marital issue, be it academic or spiritual, whatever it is, is changeable. It's changeable. Start believing that. And if you've been believing that, start living it out that is changeable. Get up in the morning believing my change will soon come. My change will soon come. Job said, I will wait for my change. I will wait for my change. Psalm says, the book of Psalms says, wait patiently for the Lord. Wait. Wait. Abraham had to wait for 20, 25 years for a promise that was made to him to be fulfilled. Joseph had to wait for 13 years for dreams he had at the age of 17 to be fulfilled at the age of 30. Moses had to wait for 40 years for the vision of the liberation of his people. The heart he has been feeling that led him to killing an Egyptian and running away. It took 40 years. <coughs> to come back don't give up verse 16 where, where, where I talked about 2 Corinthians 4 We can read from 13 anyway, 13, 2 Corinthians 4, 13. He says, it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know 
that the one who raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Verse 16. Therefore, because of this reason, because of our belief that he who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise us and present us with you in his presence. Therefore, we do not lose heart. We do not give up. We do not surrender. We don't run away. We don't abandon the rest. We don't give up on the cause of following the Lord and trusting him. We don't give up. We don't give up. We do not lose heart. We do not despair. We don't become hopeless. Why? Because there's a spirit of faith at work in our lives. And because of that, we believe. And because we believe, we speak that which we believe. And it says, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen. I say your condition is changeable. So don't fix your eyes on your condition. That's what Paul is saying. We fix our eyes not on the things that are seen. If you fix your eyes on the things that are changeable, you will, you will give up. You will despair. Your friends are doing better than you. That is changeable. So don't fix your eyes on those things. Things are not working very well for you now. Yes, it's changeable. But don't put, don't make that your focus. So, we fix our eyes not on what is seen. Why? But on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. Fix your eyes on the eternal. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye therefore then be risen with Christ, fix your gaze, fix your mind, keep your mind, fix your attention, focus, let your focus be on the things that are both, because the things that are both are eternal. Talking about... Fixing your eyes on the things that are both. And the Bible talking about Moses in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. Hebrews 11, verse 27. He says, by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. Why? Because he persevered, because he saw him who is invisible. <laughs> There's something that happens when you keep seeing God. And that's why I want somebody wrote or somebody said, if you can see God's hand in everything in your life and about yourself, you can as well leave everything in God's hand. If you truly believe that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, then you can as well leave all things in his hand. Because eventually it will work out for your good. If you truly see God in everything in your life, then you can fix your eyes on the Lord. And those that look up unto him, they looked up unto him. And their faces became radiant. And they were not ashamed. Remove your eyes from the things that change. People change. So if you put your eyes on people, they will disappoint you. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. 
The man of this world will let you down. Oh, but Jesus, Jesus never, never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. The man of this world may let you down. But Jesus never, never fails. Your father may let you down. Your mother may let you down. Your friends may let you down. But Jesus never fails. 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 Amen. Amen. Put your eyes on the Lord. Fix your gaze on the Lord. Back to that scripture we are studying. As we begin to wind up. John chapter 5. 38 years. But still trusting. 50 years. But still trusting. 100 years. But still trusting. The Bible says Abraham had faith against faith. Against, he had hope against hope. That means in the midst of hopelessness, he still had hope. Why? He counted that God is able to bring back to life even that which is dead. I declare to somebody tonight that which you are believing God for you, your eyes shall see. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. John chapter 5. And so this man was here. But the Bible said, when Jesus saw him, remember there were so many people here. I don't know why his own case had to be. Somebody say, my case is different. My case is different. Let's say like you mean it. My case is different. My case is different. Amen. My case is different. Amen. Why was he located in the midst of this multitude of people? Why was he the one chosen? Why was he the one picked out? I don't know. But there might be something about it that the others didn't know. Remember the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord, the eye of the Lord, run to and fro upon the earth, that he might show forth himself strong and mighty on behalf of those that walk uprightly. That is why all of us can be in the same congregation. And one person might get healed, the other doesn't get healed. Something that might happen to somebody doesn't happen to the other person. At times it's not like God has neglected or he just ignored or you know despised the other. But it's time for everything. And today it might be somebody's turn, and tomorrow it might be your turn. But I would think that there must be something about this man. Because the Bible says, verse 6, When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, that word learned that he acquired the knowledge of, he got to know. Somebody would have told him or he would have interacted with the man. And the man said to him, I've been here for 38 years. But why he chose him, I don't know. But I know that always there is something about us that draws the Lord. At times it's the state of the heart of a person. At times it's the desire of the heart of a person. The desperation. There is something there was something that drew Jesus to Bartimaeus. As he was passing, leaving the town, Bartimaeus saw it like, this is my last chance. If I miss him today, I don't know. But the next time, he cried out. And even while they tried to shut him down, he cried out the more. And then Jesus said, come, bring him. And he threw away his blanket and went to Jesus. There's always something that draws the Lord. There's always the hunger in your heart. There is a connection. It's like a magnet. 
that if you just hover it, you know, keep, you know, you know, hovering a magnet over something that is metallic. Then it, it starts pulling, it starts drawing. Even if, you know, around dust, you just have tiny, you know, metal in a sandy soil, just there. Oh, just take it over. Then it starts snatching, taking the eye of the Lord run to and fro upon the head. He sought for a man. I said to somebody tonight, as the Lord is searching, may he find what he's looking for in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. He's looking for faith. <clears throat> he's looking for trust. He's looking for confidence in him. He's looking for somebody that will believe his word. He's looking for somebody that will take him by his word. Do you meet the condition? Faith is always a condition for receiving anything from the Lord. For he that must come to God must do what? Believe that he is. Number two, that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Don't let anybody deceive you that there are no conditions. There are conditions for answers to prayer. There are conditions for healing. There are conditions for, 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 for blessings of all sorts. Yes, there are times God will supernaturally intervene in our situation. I, I believe like even in this man's case, because he didn't even know who Jesus was from where we read. Because when the Pharisees accosted him, he said, I don't know the man. All I know is that he just told me, get up, take your mat and walk. And I did. So later he got to know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to him, now you are healed. Sin no more. So the worst things don't come on you. Then he met the Pharisees again, and he told them that it was Jesus. Amen. Amen. May that unconditional mercy of the Lord locate each and every one of us. Amen. And may it transform and change our situations, Amen. our conditions, that no matter how paralyzed, no matter how distorted, no matter how grounded our lives are, I declare every grounded life is rising up to fly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every strength is flowing into every paralyzed life, Amen. every paralyzed marriage, Amen. paralyzed health condition, Amen. paralyzed relationships, Amen. paralyzed spiritual lives, Amen. paralyzed prayer lives, Amen. are receiving strength to rise up and walk Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Then Jesus asked him a question. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to get well? What a question to ask a man who's already told you I've been here for 38 years. He wanted to hear it from his own mouth. Do you want to get well? Or do you want to, you know, continue staying here? Because at times people have been in, in certain conditions that they don't want to leave those situations. I mean, I remember somebody who's been here in church and we offered all sorts of help, solution that would have helped the person. Because he claimed to be stranded. He claimed to be jobless. He claimed to have lost his house. He's been repossessed. Okay. And then we have people in church who offered him. I'm a manager in a place and I'm going to put you into this job and so you can earn some living. And he said, no, I don't want that. I want to carry on going from place to place asking people for money. Which was why he showed up in church that money. To ask for money. And so all the help we offered him, he didn't want. So it's not out of place that Jesus wanted to know from this man what he really wanted out of his life. Do you know what you want out of your life? Even spiritually, some people want to be so dependent. They dream a dream, they get a phone and call somebody. Why don't you dig into the world and find out things for yourself? I'm not saying there's anything absolutely wrong 
We're seeking for help or assistance. But Paul writing to a group of Christians in the book of Hebrews say, a long time you should have been teachers of the word, but even now you are not even ready to drink the milk of the world. That tells the level of their dependence. Spiritually, are you maturing and growing? Measuring your spiritual life? Or you just still want to be receiving handouts? There are Christians who have been in church for 10 years. But still, to, just to share a simple word of salvation, lead somebody to Christ, simple message of salvation. You ask them to pray. They struggle. They don't know what to pray or even how to pray. That's not a problem. The disciples didn't know how to pray, but they asked the Lord, Lord, teach us to pray because they wanted to grow. They wanted to make progress. They wanted to march on. They wanted to arise and begin to be responsible in their lives. As I begin to conclude, Jesus asked him that question. So it's not out of place to, from time to time, ask yourself that question. Do I know what I want out of life? Do you want to remain a beggar and be receiving support from people? Or do you want to take responsibility for your life? And rather than being one who is always receiving and getting, you'll be in a position to be given and ministering to others and touching life and making a difference in people's lives. That's why Jesus, then he said, Sir, verse 7, the invalid answer, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water. To him, the only way he could be helped is to get into that pool. Have you come to a point where you think that there's only one solution to your problem? Somebody's praying, God bless me, send me money. But God blesses you, gives you a job. Hasn't money been given to you? <laughs> They're only thinking one way. There's only one way I can be made well. Jesus, if you want to help me, just wait when the angel comes, then you can put me into the water. That's what he's saying. I have no man. He said, while I'm trying to get in, somebody else goes down ahead of me. For time, we cannot unpack some of this or apply some of these things to our life. Excuses upon excuses. I have no one. Excuses. Why are you in this situation? I have nobody. Nobody sent me to school. My uncle didn't help me. My parents did, died quite early. I had no money. This and, we, we can multiply excuses upon excuses. Yes, those excuses are genuine. They are valid. They are real. But the thing about them is that nobody had ever progressed in life given excuses. Nobody makes progress given excuses. I have no man. And when I'm trying to get there, some other people go ahead of me. Do you feel like that? Like people are always getting ahead of you, getting ahead of you, and you're never getting a chance in life. Your chance has come. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus said to him, get up. After listening to this kind of man, Jesus said to him, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. What a word to say to a man who is paralyzed. Get up. Rise up. Jesus, I'm saying, I cannot rise up. I don't have what it takes. There's no strength, no life in these in this legs and in any part of me. I'm paralyzed. Don't you see? Can't you see? Or are you trying to mock me? You know, in my place, somebody will talk to you like that. And you see, I'm, I'm, I can't walk. I can't help myself. Why are you trying to? Don't settle for whatever condition. Don't conclude that your situation and your condition, wherever you are now, is the last chapter of your life. There are many chapters of your life that are still waiting to be opened. There are still things that will flow out of your life. Riches will flow. Blessings will flow. Miracles will flow. Lives will still be touched. Your life will make a difference to people's lives. Keep believing. Keep rising up. Jesus said, rise up. Are you going to rise up? Are you going to stand up from that position? Are you going to change your posture? Both your, 
you, you, you know, you, you, the posture of your mind, your mindset, the posture of your mindset, all the I can't. I've never done it before. Change your posture. Change your position. Start believing. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Get up. Stand up from those disappointments. Stand up from those betrayers. Stand up from those, those rejections you have suffered. Stand up from those racism, you know, uh, attacks you have faced and you are facing. Stand up. Stop lying down. Get up. Get up to life. Get up to your vision. Get up to your dreams. Start dreaming again. Start believing God. Nobody goes anywhere lying down. Rise up. Rise up in your prayer life. There's something you can still do. You can change your prayer life. You can pray longer than you are praying now. You can pray, you know, more, more spiritual, you know, more authoritative prayer. There, there is still something you can still do about your, your, your devotional life, your Bible study life. There is still something you can do about your, 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 your soul winning life, reaching out to people, sharing the gospel, giving out tracts, encouraging people to believe the Lord. There is still something you can do about your life of worship. Stop lying down. Rise up. Rise up. Take up your mat. This mat is what he has been lying down on. What have you been lying down on? Take it up. Instead of that thing carrying you, start carrying it. Amen? Amen. And then do what? Walk. In this month of March, we must walk. Amen? Amen. We must walk. We are rising up. We are taking up our mat. Amen. Power is changing hand. Amen. Strength is coming to areas of weaknesses. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says, At once the man was cured, and he picked up his mat, and he walked. All because Jesus uttered a word. Rise up. He didn't say, How can you say to me, rise up? I'm not yet healed. Once the word goes out, he said to Peter, Come. And Peter got up and started walking on the sea. Just a release of his word. Create whatever you lack. Release his solution. When he said to darkness, let there be light, just that utterance, light appeared. Amen. Amen. And when he said to Peter, launch your net into the deep, just that utterance, Peter said, at your word. When he releases the word, something is created. The Part of the, 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 the dimension or attributes of the word of God is that it's creative. His word creates. Just like your own words create. That's why the Bible says there is power of life and what? Death in the tongue. What you say creates an environment. Designs a life. Or designs your life. Looking at you, what you are today and the way you look might just be what your mouth has created. And you keep can't continue saying, I'm just saying nobody, nobody knows me, nobody cares about me, nobody loves me, I just don't matter to anyone. You, you keep saying all those things and you are reducing yourself. What does the Bible say about you? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That means I'm, I'm so handsome. I'm made in the likeness of God. I am made in the image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Learn to speak the language of faith. Faith has got a language. We will deal with that too as in, uh, uh, in the midst of the month. But as I conclude there, once he gives the word, he sent forth his word and it went and healed them. He just said, get up. Take your mat and walk. That is the role of faith and obedience if you believe you obey god is telling you something today is the day to do something about it. let's bow down our heads as we pray arise and walk lord we thank you for your word tonight 
We give you by the glory and the praise for the insight you have given us into your word tonight. Makaya Labarando. Thank you for your word. This word shall accomplish your purpose in our lives. For you say, so shall my word be that goeth for it shall not return unto me for it. This word will accomplish your plan, your purpose, your program in our lives. This word will bring back strength to areas of weaknesses. Areas of our lives that have been paralyzed by fear, paralyzed by doubt, paralyzed by unbelief paralyzed by worries and anxieties. Any area of our lives, our physical lives, our spiritual lives, our emotional life, our financial life, our marital lives, our academic lives, any area of our lives have been paralyzed by anything, by any means. Lord, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we hear your word. And having heard this word tonight, we rise up, we arise, and we begin to walk and make progress. In this month of March, you will walk. You will make progress. You will run and not be weary. You will mount up on wings like the eagle. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak the word of life and of strength into every area of our lives. Every paralyzed life. Paralyzed by sicknesses. Paralyzed by diseases. I command every sickness and every disease. Lose your power and your grip over the lives of God's people right now. Diabetes, I rebuke you. Take your hands off God's people. The life of God's people. High blood pressure, I rebuke you. I delete you from the lives of God's people. Asthma, I come against you. I uproot you from the root. I terminate you as salmon in the lives of God's people. Fibroid, resisting pregnancies and fruitfulness. I terminate you as salmon. I command you be dematerialized. Dematerialized from their lives. Right now, melt by fire and flow out of their lives and body. Every blood condition, every form of cancer, every form of uh, sickle cell anemia, leukemia, by whatever name you are called or known, I command you right now, lose your power and your grip over God's people's life right now. Check out of their lives. Check out of their lives. Go! Go! From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I speak wholeness. I speak wholeness. I speak healing. I speak deliverance. I speak restoration. 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 Life is being restored. Strength is being restored. Joy is being restored. Peace is being restored. Glory is being restored. In the place of shame, glory is coming back. And in any way, our lives have been abandoned. We are rising up from every form of abandonment. We are rising up from every kind of ground. Uh, uh, strand. In any way, we'll be stranded. In any way, we are stuck. We are taken off from that stock. Stock position. We are changing position. We are changing levels in this month of March. We are changing levels. We are changing positions. We are changing our postures. Yes, we are taking new postures and new positions. And we are moving forward. We are making progress. We are marching forward. Yes, we are going forward. Yes, we are taking territories. Yes, yes, we are fulfilling destinies. Yes, we are walking in obedience to the word of God and to the will of God for our lives. Protracted negative situations. Protracted negative conditions. No matter how long you have existed, even if you were born with that condition, every form of blindness, long sightedness, short sightedness, I declare new eyesight, new sight, new sight, new sight. Makaya ni braga santo higa brande ma ke bo si ga anto higa barundo gesen ne barugo no barundo santo higa brande gane 
I come against arthritis of the knees. Arthritis around the waist. Arthritis around the neck. Makayaba, lose your power and your grip over the lives of God's people. Now take your hands off them. Every lock shoulder, lock shoulder. You can't move your, your hand. You can't raise your arm. As I speak right now, I command those hands, those arms, those shadows, unlock now. Now begin to move your arm. Begin to stretch it to the right. Begin to turn it around. Right now, strength is flowing. Healing. We get up. We are standing up from every excuse. From every excuse. Every excuse. I have no money. I have no man. I have nobody to introduce me, to speak for me. Today we are rising up from all those excuses and we are moving forward. We are making progress. We are succeeding. We refuse to keep lying down and to continue lying down. Any position of lying down that we have taken spiritually, any position that depicts lying down spiritually, lying down emotionally, giving up on life, surrendering, we change our position. We change our situation. We believe you, Lord. We walk in obedience to your word. We rise up and we move forward. And we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Grace life we declare to you. Arise and walk. Grace life, arise and walk. Grace life, international church. Arise. Get up. Stand up. Take your bed. Take your mat. Rise up. Walk. Grace life, walk. Resist strength to move. You are not stranded. You are not grounded. You are not stuck. You are not abandoned. Grace is released to you. Strength is released to you. Grace life, international church. It is your time. It is your season. This is your mood to so rise up by faith, Grace Life International Church. You are rising up. You are shining. You are rising up. You are moving forward. You are rising up. You are taking territories. You are rising up. You are occupying your place. Your voice shall be heard. Healing is released. Restoration is released. Lives are changed. Termination of negative conditions. Termination of negative situations. Thank you, Father. We give you back the glory. We give you back the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Just as we begin to conclude, just say, Father, I lift up the entire month of March into your hands. I commit every day of this month, March 2023, into your hands. Every day, every second, every minute, every hour, every part of the day, the mornings, the afternoon, the noon time, the evening, and the night. I commit everything into your hand. For that which is committed into your hand is saved. Nothing, nothing, no harm can come upon them. No man can snatch them out of your hand. And so I bring this entire month into your hand. Every bit of it, the days and the nights of God, even until the end of this month, that the first day of, of, of March 2023 is committed into your hand. I surrender the entire month. I declare that your will be done in my life. Your kingdom will come upon every area of my life and my home. And, and so, Lord, I hand over myself, my spirit, my soul, my body. Have your way in every area of my life. Have your way in this month. Let your will be done. Let your plan be fulfilled in my life. Make, help me to fulfill destiny. Help me to serve you. Help me to love you. Help me to worship you. Help me to honor you throughout this month, oh Lord. Lead me. Grant me the strength for each day. I ask for grace for each day. I make demand for each day. I begin to command every day day of this month to deliver to me the plan of God, the purpose of God, the program of God for my life. Hey, every month of March 2023, 
deliver to me, deliver to my household, deliver to my family, deliver to Grace Life International Church, the plan of God, the purpose of God, the program of God. I declare in this moment, I shall be guided by the Holy Spirit. I shall be led by the Spirit of God. There will be no errors. There will be no mistakes. There will be no failures. There will be no defeat. I walk in victory. I walk in success. I walk in favor. I walk in glory. I walk in the, in the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit. I walk by divine instruction. I know the mind of God. I have the will of God. I know His will and plan and purpose and program for my life. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Blessed be God who daily loads us with benefits. We command every day's load of benefits. The blessings of every day be released unto us. All earth release. All heavens release. Every element of creation we command you release to us that which belongs to us. Release the wind, release the seas, release the vegetation and forest, release to us that which belongs to us. In this month, there shall be no lack, there shall be no want, no scarcity. We walk in abundance, we walk in divine provisions, we walk in, 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 in plenty of supplies of the Lord. We walk in victory. We walk in glory. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. We give you back all the glory and praise. That our who has brought us into this month, we continue to lead us and guide us. In the mighty name of Jesus. The heavens are open unto us. The voice of the Lord will come unto us. In this month, we shall dream dreams. Amen. We shall have visions. We shall pursue them. Amen. The strength of the Lord will guide us each day. Amen. The Lord bless and keep us, cause his face to shine over and upon us. Amen. The Lord be gracious unto us Amen. and grant us his peace Amen. now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit rest and abide with us now and, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely. His goodness and, and mercy shall, shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and evermore. Amen. Shalom. You are blessed and highly favored. Amen. Go in this your might, reign in the midst of your enemies, Amen. occupy, even possess your position, Amen. and enter into your inheritance, Amen. and return with your testimonies. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.